In 2023, FedEx did over 90 billion in revenue. They have 500,000 employees in 220 countries worldwide, and they have over 180,000 motorized vehicles in their fleet. It is a well-respected, massive company, and getting a job there can be quite competitive, but it's about to be a lot less competitive for you because you have reached my playlist in which I'm going to teach you how to get a job with FedEx. In today's video, we're gonna cover common FedEx interview questions, and I'm going to teach you from a recruiter's perspective exactly how to answer them to stand out as the best candidate. Now, this is video one of a four-part series, so at the very end of this video, I will actually pull the next one on the screen so you can click from this one straight into the next video. And if you watch these four videos, you will guaranteed to be better than most of the candidates who you are going to compete against for the job you were interviewing for. So sit tight. Let's get into it. Now, the first question is, explain how you prioritize tasks to manage multiple responsibilities during a given workday. Now, this is a pretty standard question, but what they're looking for here is they're looking for, do you have a system? And are you confident in your ability to execute what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis if you have multiple competing deadlines, if you have priorities, and you are busy? Now, the key to answering this question is you have to explain to them that you are comfortable in this type of environment where you have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of deadlines, you have to share with them that you've experienced doing it previously and you need to talk them through your system. Now, if you can do these three things, you're gonna answer the question great. So an answer might sound something like this. You know, that's a really great uh, question. And this is something I'm really comfortable with. In most of my jobs, there are a lot of deadlines, there's competing deadlines, and there's a lot of responsibility, but that kind of motivates me and I like being busy. What I wanna make sure I do is I really plan out my day. I think the T to executing uh, multiple responsibilities and, and really busy days is having a really great plan, having your tasks lined up, prioritizing things, and making sure that you have enough time to complete all the tasks in front of you. Something like that is a great way to answer this question, and if you can do that, you're going to satisfy it. The next question is, how do you stay organized and focused working under pressure? Now, what you should already see from the first two questions is they're going to prioritize someone who can deal with living in a fast-paced environment. That's important to them, it's part of their day-to-day. -day. So whenever you're asked another question like this, you know, how do you, how do you manage this type of environment? One of the things that they have to walk away with is that you have comfort in this type of environment. Now with a question like this, I would make sure that I convey to them that it doesn't stress you and that you actually work best under pressure that you would prefer this, that you're the type of person who wants to stay busy and really likes it when there's fast moving targets and you've got to go, go, go in order to complete your tasks and have a great day. An answer might sound something like this. You know, that's a great question. I would say that I, first and foremost, am a highly organized person. I'm the type of person who really likes to stay organized and have a system for everything. The other thing I would say is I really actually like working under pressure. It's when I feel I do my best work. So my system is always one, control what you can control, make sure you are organized as possible, but then after that, once you have a good system, prioritizing things, you know, then you wanna get after it. You know, then you wanna make sure that you're going through, you're doing things efficiently, you're communicating if there's going to be a delay, but having a great system and then being able to experience that type of high, fast-paced, high-pressured environment, that's where I found that I've really thrived. If you can do that, it's a great way to answer this question. They're gonna walk away knowing, okay, they've done this before, they're comfortable, and it seems like there's someone who really prioritizes and being organized so they can be efficient, which is exactly how you want them to feel. The next question is, explain how you approach troubleshooting within a logistical environment. This is a proficiency question. They wanna know that you're the type of person who is capable of doing this. This is something you will experience in this role, right? So as with most things, you need to be able to articulate how you would deal with this. You need to walk them through how you handle a logistical issue. And ideally, you can share with them past experiences. So this is one of those questions where a previous story makes a lot of sense. You can share with them what role you were in, what you were experiencing, and how you're able to solve through it. And when you give that example, then you use that as like a starting point as to that's how I handle that situation. And typically, that's how I approach them. I make sure that I A, B, and C and et cetera. You're again giving them an example of a time you've done it and you've shared with them your methodology for dealing with that type of issue. And if you can just walk them through that and experience, um, give them the experience of your comfort dealing with something like that, specifically it's, it's a highly complex, uh, high, complex logistical issue, that's gonna be a great way to answer this question. The next question is, what measures do you take to make sure safety and compliance 
regulations are followed in your workstation. Whenever you have a safety question, um, it underscores just how important safety is to an organization because we don't get a lot of questions like this. Unless you're in EHS, Environmental Health and Safety, you're not gonna get questions around safety protocols unless it is a massive emphasis to the company. If safety is part of the interview process, it means it really matters to them. So I think what you really need to do here is underscore just how important you also view safety is. When you answer a question like this, starting off with saying, you know, safety has always been a really big priority to me. I wanna make sure that myself and my coworkers are safe. And I think the key to that is following the regulations that have been put in place because they are proven to make sure that you can limit the chance of risk. Something like that is a great way to start it. And then from there, just tell them what it is you do. I would make sure that I, I, you know, I highlighted the fact that I like to follow these regulations. I'm highly compliant because I understand the importance of doing that. And throwing those, those phrases in there, answering them like that, making it your own is a great way to answer this question. The next question is, explain your experience collaborating with cross-functional teams to drive efficiency within their organization. Now, this is a great question um, because it gives you an opportunity to talk about previous collaboration. So a few things here. This is a great question to have uh, a story ready. Um, it's also really important that you talk about your belief um, in collaboration and the benefit of doing it with different teams. Uh, so it's, it's a, a pretty easy question, I think, to answer as long as you have a background with this and you have examples. But a good answer might sound something like this. Well, that's a really great question. And I can tell you from my past that I'm a huge fan of collaboration. And that's with my team, but also in cross-functional teams. I think there's some really great benefits that can come out of collaborating with other uh, departments in your organization because then you get different viewpoints on an issue and you can come up with a better solution. In fact, previously at ABC Company, I was part of a cross-functional team and we had to deliver blank. That's a great way to do it. You talk about your belief, your understanding, the value of it, and then you tee up a story in which you can demonstrate a time in which you actually did solve a problem collaborating with a cross-functional team. The next question is, how do you stay up to date on the latest trends and technology in the supply chain management space? This is a great question, and depending on your role, it might sound a little bit different, but they're basically asking you, well, how do you stay up to date? How do you stay informed? And this question is going to be unique to you. Um, but you want to make sure you have an answer. If you don't have an answer here and they go, hey, they ask you this question, you go, oh, I, I don't know. I guess I rely on my employer to provide me with information. That's a bad answer. A good answer is that you have self-directed learning. You were doing things on your own to make sure you are up to date in your industry. This could be newsletters you subscribe to, magazines you get, YouTube channels that you follow that specifically focus in on your area of expertise. This isn't a challenging question. If you have an answer thought of, and you have different things you do to stay up to date, but if you don't have anything that you specifically do, this one can be really hard to answer because you're not going to be able to fabricate something in the moment. So just think about what do you do and what are the things you'd be comfortable sharing and explaining further in an interview. And if you can do that, you'll do great. The next question is, how do you balance the need for speed and accuracy while performing your role? This is a great question and it's a common question you might get when you're interviewing for a role that is high pace. Because speed is obviously very important if there's a lot of tasks to complete, but so is accuracy. You can't do a lot of things incorrectly. That's just going to make the problem much worse. So when you're answering this question, you wanna make sure that you underscore the importance of both. And then again, give them your system, how you go about doing that. So the answer might sound something like this. You know, that's a really great question. And in most of the roles I've been in in my career, I think I've certainly seen that both speed and accuracy um, is really important to functioning in the role at a high level. And for me, I, I value both of these things. You know, I'm the type of person who wants to move quickly to get a lot done, but that doesn't do any good if you're not doing it right. So for me, one of the things I always make sure I do is I make sure I understand the best way to perform a task. Because if you don't understand the optimal way to perform a task, you're never going to be able to do it both fast um, and accurately. So I make sure I have a really firm understanding of how to perform my role and then I just try to work hard and work consistency. And I make sure that I'm checking to make sure there's accuracy along the way. Every once in a while I'll build in an accuracy check to make sure that I'm doing things in the best most efficient way possible. And that's usually how I stay on top of it. But you know I would say this is something I've had to do in most of the roles I've been in um, and I like it. It makes a day go by and it keeps me at the top of my game. So I'm a big fan of operating in environments like this.
That's a great way to answer the question. Make sure you make it your own. You don't want to sound like me. You want to sound like you. But if you can hit on those things and have a message that is similar to that, you'll do a great job. Now, the type of question you're going to get in addition to these are behavioral interview questions. They're some of the more common questions to be asked in an interview, and they can be some of the more challenging ones. That's why I make this video here. This video here is number two in the series, and in this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to know on how to answer behavioral interview questions. So I'm done here, and I will see you over there.